everyone, welcome back to part 2 of the perception of death. Uh, I'm Sarah Jean and I'll be taking you all through the concept of death. So we'll mainly be talking about how people celebrate death around the world, some interesting funeral traditions and common perceptions of what an afterlife might look like. So in China, uh, people celebrate Hungry Ghost Festival and Chinese Taoists and Buddhists will mark this solemn occasion by burning paper offerings which signify the things that living relatives wish to send to their deceased loved ones in the afterlife. They also release paper lanterns to help guide the spirits of their loved ones home. The Japanese will also start bonfires and also visit the graveyards of their loved ones to celebrate the Obon Festival. Both the Obon Festival and the Hungry Ghost Festivals are celebrated on the 15th day of the 7th lunar month. And in Korea, people will honour their ancestors in the 8th month of the lunar calendar, which will be roughly around September or October. Food is given to the deceased, graves are cleaned, and performances will be held to thank their ancestors for their role in providing a good harvest for the year. In Mexico, people will celebrate Dia de Muertos, which translates to the Day of the Dead. People pay homage to and celebrate lives of the deceased loved ones by building altars and displaying sugar skulls, amongst many other things. In Guatemala, giant kites are also flown, and in Ecuador, the Quechua people memorialize their deceased loved ones by visiting, cleaning, and eating at the graveside. So some of you also might have watched common depictions of this festival in popular films such as Coco and Salma's Big Wish. And lastly, in the US and many other countries around the world, people will celebrate Halloween. This festival originates from the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. November 1st marks the Celts' New Year and the start of a long winter that would usually claim many lives and many crops. Therefore, traditional Halloween comprise more of burning crops and animal sacrifices on bonfires, and people will wear costumes typically consisting of animal heads and skins. They also attempted to tell each other's fortunes and prophecies because they believed that the presence of otherworldly spirits made it easier. These prophecies would boost morale during these long winters. However, today, the Disneyfication of Halloween in films such as the Halloween series and the Nightmare Before Christmas has made Halloween the festival that we all know today. It has become a secular but more community-centered holiday, with parades and town-wide Halloween parties as the featured entertainment. Despite the differences in the traditions of the many cultures, food and dance is commonly used to facilitate community bonding, and the sense of communal identity is reinforced through the traditional practices to honour their past and the ancestors. All right, next, we'll be talking about some interesting funeral practices around the world. In the Philippines, the Tinguian tribe would dress the bodies of the deceased up and prop them up in a chair, and sometimes they'll also place a lit cigarette in their mouth. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, deceased of the Torajan tribe are not buried, but they are embalmed and stored in a traditional house under the same roof with his or her family. Well, this is because family social status is determined by how elaborate they can hold a funeral, which I guess is quite unique as social status is usually determined by how extravagant a family can hold a birthday or a wedding. Well, in this case, funerals can be quite costly for these families, and they will usually have to save up for a super long time. So while the family saves, the bodies of the loved ones will temporarily reside under the same roof as them. When the day is finally here and the funeral process begins, families, family members are required to slaughter buffaloes and decorate the front of their house with their horns. And the more horns, the, the higher the status. So when a loved one dies in Aboriginal society in, in Australia, elaborate rituals will also begin. First, there will be a smoking ceremony, which is held in the loved one's living area to drive away the spirit. Next, a feast will be held and mourners will be painted ochre as they partake in food and dance. The body is traditionally placed atop a platform and covered in leaves as it is left to decompose. In Ghana, people aspire to be buried in coffins that represent them, so um, it usually depicts their work or something that they loved in life. And these fantasy coffins Range, range from a coffin shaped like a Mercedes Benz for a very successful businessman to an oversized fish for a fisherman, sometimes to a really big Bible for somebody who loved going to church. Now, let's move on to talk about some common perceptions of what an afterlife might look like. And to discuss this, we must first look at the philosophy of death. So, some philosophers like Socrates, he thought that death was simply a separation of the soul from the body. 
So since you won't have a body, you won't be influenced by your senses and you can start to appreciate goodness, beauty and justice through the efforts of unaided intellect. But this is only applicable when there, if there is an afterlife. So what if there isn't an afterlife? Well, Epicurus thought that there wasn't an afterlife since he was a materialist and you equals to your body. Therefore, death really doesn't re concern us since as long as we are alive, death is not here and once death comes, we will cease to exist. As, however, some people may fear death because then they'll miss out on the things that they want to experience in life. Well, the American philosopher Thomas Nagel, he thought that cool, he, he would argue that cool stuff happened before you were born. But if you do not feel at loss at these missed events, why should you feel lost at missed events ha that happen after you die? What these three philosophers have in common is that you should not fear your own death. But what about the death of others? Is it reasonable to fear the death of your loved ones? I guess it really depends on how you define death. If death is simply the exact moment where your life ends, well, you're technically not afraid of the death of others, but afraid of being left behind alone. So Zhuang Zi, he questions why you would fear the inevitable. So if you celebrate other events and milestones of different stages of your life, such as like birthdays, moving out of your parents' home, weddings, and etc., you should similarly celebrate death. Next, we'll be talking about the concept of heaven and hell. So heaven is this religious, cosmological, and transcendent place where beings such as gods, angels, spirits, and venerated ancestors are said to originate and live. So according to the beliefs of some religions, heavenly beings can descend to earth or reincarnate, and earthly beings can ascend to earth in the afterlife. Or, some, or in some exceptional cases, people can also enter heaven alive. On the other hand, hell is often depicted as this place of punishment where the dead will repent for their sins committed on earth. But it is also important to note that in some cultures, hell merely refers to a neutral place for the dead. So um, there are some very interesting interpretations of heaven ha heaven and hell in the media today. So for example, the TV series The Good Place has a very unique take on this. Well, not to worry, there won't be any spoiler alerts or anything here, but y'all should really go and check it out because it's quite insightful uh, and furthermore, y'all probably have a lot of time during this HBR period. Next, we'll be talking about the 10 courts of hell. So based on Chinese mythology, when a person dies, he will be sent to the first court of hell and the king there will conduct preliminary trials and judge him according to his deeds in his past life. So if this person is deemed good, he will be led over the golden bridge to paradise. If his good deeds outweigh his crimes committed, then he will be led over the silver bridge to paradise. On the other hand, evildoers will be sent to repent before the mirror of retribution, and then he will be taken to a subsequent court of hell to be punished. So uh, as you go further into the courts of hell, you'll be punished even more heavily for the worst crimes that you commit. After punishment, they will be then taken to the wheel of reincarnation. Reincarnation is the philosophical and religious concept that the non-physical essence of a living being starts a new life in a different physical form or body after biological death. It is also called rebirth or transmigration. Alright, so this marks the end of our sharing on the perception of death. We really hope that none of you were too disturbed by the graphic photos or videos and hopefully you also learn something from this two-part session. Have a fun HDL, stay safe, stay healthy, and yeah, thanks guys!